Caught behind the Venetian blinds Had to reach for the city lines And this ain't where I belong Ain't look at me, man, what I become I've been running east Looking for sunset Good morning. <laughs> We just had that great little camp in at Hugh River last night. It was a good little quiet spot, nice little free camp, perfect for what we needed. Um, we're just gonna keep heading along the Red Centre Way today or Navajira Drive. It's pretty straightforward when you're exploring the, exploring the uh, Great McDonald's because it's really everything's just in one line and the road just drives along and there's just turn offs to all the gorges and everything there is to see and do. So we don't really have that, that much of a plan, we'll just stay where we want to stay and if things don't appeal to us we'll keep moving on let's check it out i'm excited ellery holt we'll see you out there What are you doing, Liz? Oh, I'm just gonna go get James a different shirt. He, um, I may have dressed him in one of Harrison's. <laughs> How's your baggy shirt? Cool. It is Harrison's. He's a scrawny little two-year-old, and he's wearing a five-year-old shirt. Anyway, probably shouldn't worry about it, really. It's, a, it's only for aesthetics, isn't it, darling? You make me feel bad. <laughs> Oh, look at these two near. It looks like love, but it's actually not. Oh, my friends are going to me. Not an expression. Okay, so we've pulled up at Ellery Creek Big Hole. We just had a quick squeeze through the campground. Yeah, not, not a bad looking campground. Some of the sites are really tight, quite small. Clearly only for a vehicle, maybe, if that. So yeah, if, you, if you've got a van, you'd want to get here early because there's no pre-booking. Just uh, turn up, pay your fees on arrival. I don't think we're not going to camp here. We're going to keep moving on, but we're just going to go for the walk now and go and check out this uh, Ellery Creek Big Hole. Eh? Sounds good. All right, this is for you. All right, come Thank on, you. come on, lads. Lads. Well, that's Ellery Creek Big Hole. Looks like a nice, nice, reasonably nice swimming hole if you were uh, if you were that way inclined. It's a bit bit cool today for my liking. It's pretty here. There's the reflection, you get the full reflection in the pond or waterhole, I guess you'd call it. It's nice. I'll add it to my list of artworks to make. Popular spot, eh? Yeah. Oh, we might jump back in the car, I reckon. This is pretty. Nice spot. Yeah, it's, it's a nice spot for a picnic. I guess like... It's only so long you can stand and look at a waterhole, though. The walk itself to, to the Ellery Creek is, to the hole is only 100 metres. <laughs> it's a paved footpath. There is another walk here called the Dolomite Walk, which is about three k's. Yeah, we're, we're not gonna do that one today, but if you're looking for a little bit of a bigger walk, they wait, wait about racing to the van, be the first one here, and then they trip over each other and have a stack. Hopeless. <laughs> It 
it's worth it. It's one of those like. It's get short. Up, once you get to the top. It's not a very long walk up the up to the lookout, but it's steep. We are so high. Hey, you did it, buddy. Good job, H man. Good climbing. Serpentine Gorge Lookout Trail. So there is just a trail down to the gorge that's nice, easy, flat, 1K in, 1K out. And then uh, there's a lookout trail to the side of that that's quite steep, lots of rocks, rocky steps, a um, bit of a scramble at the top. Fine for Harrison and to do, but we backpacked James for this one. Definitely worth it. If you've got little kids, probably under three, give them a backpack. Um, yeah, nice. It's just beautiful, look at this. I, I think these rocks look like stegosauruses. They've got these massive like spikes up the back of them. when you look out to the mountains and you can just see the sediment layers in the rocks and this this is one dark line that just runs the whole way across this ridge line for as far as you can see it's just it's crazy to think about like the earth's formation and the geology and just yeah how this place changes and evolves through time and what will it look like in another 100 years 200 years 300 years 700 years from now yeah, it's pretty special. I'm just, yeah, I don't know if I've said this enough, but it's so nice to be able to be out here doing this, exploring, and just seeing the country that we live in. It's, it's so big and so different. Yeah, get out here. It's amazing. You'll never regret traveling. You'll never regret it. <laughs> All right, that's Serpentine Gorge and the lookout done and dusted. That was a, that was a really good walk. We ended up running into another traveling family at the car park before we did it. So we, uh, we didn't do a spectacular job of filming the walk, but you get the idea. <laughs> and we filmed the best bit when you get to the other end. So they're actually traveling the opposite way. Um, so we just gave each other some tips about camping. They're gonna head to Hugh River where we camped last night. And they've told us that the Fink River to the west of us now is uh, probably the pick of the campgrounds in the west. So I think providing we can get a spot there, um, we'll make that camp for the next two or three nights and do some exploring from there. Will be our rough plan. So Nick and Hillary, if you're watching this, great to meet you and hopefully we'll run into you again somewhere along the way. I think it's only about 40 or 50 Ks from here to, to camp. So we'll just punch that out and then uh, settle in for the night and do some exploring tomorrow. It's been really nice though. You just meet people, when you're doing something that you love, you meet people that are doing things, like that have such similar interests as you. And yeah, we're finding that, that every now and then we're just meeting these people that are traveling with kids and we just instantly click. And it's just so nice, especially when you're away from your regular friends and you don't have service all the time to just have that connection with other people as well. Not that I don't love Simon's company 100% of the time, but it is nice to meet people as well. Yeah, it is. It's good to have a yarn with people. And it is, like Liz said, it's just really easy when you meet like-minded people, just have a quick chat. And it's nice just to break it up a bit. You do miss that social side of hanging out with mates and stuff. So yeah, it'd be nice if they were going the same way. It didn't work out yeah. this time, but if you know people like that, you're running to go going the same way and the kids get along and we get along. Be nice to sit and have a couple of beers with them around the campfire, but maybe one day we'll run into them again, you never know. Hey, darling, can
Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday It's a bit sandy here. I might just go the max tracks under and just try and get the back to climb up a bit. Yeah. Just so we're not so nose down. Yeah. Just grab that head as well. No, I don't want that as well. I should really let my tyres down as well, I haven't even let the tyres down, but this is more just for tonight. And then we'll... Well, I'll just, yeah, that's not trying to climb a mountain. It's a lazy man's way of doing it, kind of, I suppose. I could go around and let all eight tyres down to then drive a K to then have to pump them all back up again. Look at our new backyard. Pretty good, eh? Good to find. People would pay a small fortune for this. Mm. Not even a small one, a large one. <laughs> Alright. You do. You want to see your new backyard? Yeah. What do you think of this? Wow. You can go through rocks there if you like. Down there? Yeah. You can go down there through some rocks if you like. Really? Yeah. Whoa. When we come in here, we just got bogged in this uh, river sand. Only really the rear axle because obviously a lot of weight and trying to pull a three ton van through the sand. So I just, um, not too fussed about trying to get recovered tonight, although we're, pretty, we're nearly out now anyway. But I just mainly threw the max tracks under that rear end just to lift it up out of the sand. Same as what I did last night just to get the uh, get the nose of the van up a bit so we have a bit of a comfier sleep tonight. She's a pretty busy spot here. There'd be there's a few dozen campers in here, but there's plenty of room for everyone. You don't have to be on top of each other, which is what I've heard some of the other campgrounds around are like. So yeah. Anyway, best part of the day. Cheers. So I think when we left camp this morning, I'm just, I'm gonna have a little rant about our electrical system because I'm bloody impressed by it. When we left camp this morning, what were we, Liz? About, it was 50 something percent. So we had to recoup somewhere around nearly 200 amps today. Now we've only driven, I mean not many Ks, but even in time that the engine was actually running, so the alternator's charging. We've probably only driven for about, I don't know, we've been in the car for an hour today, hour and a half. Maybe even less, Liz reckons. Oh, right, probably an hour and a half if you include idling time and that, having a look at stuff. So, and then it's been like I don't know if you can see, like it's been cloudy all day, and we've just pulled up at camp and we're chockers, full hundred percent battery charge. So we've recouped probably at least 170, 180 amps in that time. It's just, in, I can't believe how how well these batteries just, these lithium batteries just suck up the charge like and with hardly any solar and hardly any alternator charge we've gotten back that many years that's that blows me away anyway i'm impressed by it i mean we're going to spend two nights here we can go nuts with power look we'll use the thermomix and that to cook dinner and breakfast and coffee machine and 
all that and we'll still easily be fine even though we're not towing the van at all tomorrow so it'll only be solar all right <laughs> so simon's a bit shirty with me because <laughs> last night at about 4 a.m i woke up to this sound like this really loud rustling sound and we had all the washing strung out outside and it sounded in my defense it sounded like there was a camel underneath the washing line just going through our washing and I made Simon get up and go and check and it was just the wind and so he's a bit shit and now he looks tired because he couldn't sleep last night took me bloody ages to get to sleep and I get woken up to can you check what's under the awning I think it's a camel camel mate like, are you kidding me turn the light on look outside you see the washing's blowing in the wind and the awning's moving in the wind just the wind mate go make the sleep a camel? Are you freaking kidding me? Camels got better things to do than come and eat your washing. I, I, I thought they might be like goats. You know, goats come and eat all your clothes. Goats eat your clothes. Probably still be quieter than you eating. <laughs> oh, that's how this started. Simon was snoozing at the table. And I may have snuck a little special treat. And I got him one. And he goes, oh, you didn't get me one. I said, oh, you were sleeping. And he goes, yeah, the sound of your chewing woke me up. <laughs> like yeah, we live in a small space. Like <laughs> Good morning. What a beautiful, quiet night we had last night here. Was it was a good spot? <laughs> I actually now, when, when I say quiet, you got footage of me, did you? Sleeping on the couch. I fell asleep on the couch at about about six last night. And... Then I just woke up from there and pretty much went to bed. <laughs> so I got a heap of sleep last night, so I feel really good. Liz stayed up reading for a bit, but we had a really, really quiet night. Um, we're just getting ready this morning. I'm gonna go backtrack a little bit because we drove past to get into camp yesterday. We skipped past a couple of spots. Uh, the Oka Pits will be first up today, I think. And then Ormonston Gorge as well. We were really lazy last night. We didn't even do the dishes. We haven't even done the dishes this morning. We're just going to leave the van. If, if you can't see the mess, it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> no one will ever know. It'll be our little secret, hey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one will ever know. Yeah. Good not to have to pack up or go anywhere this morning. This, yeah, I think we were due for a two-night stop somewhere just to chill out. So I'm going to go and unhitch the van uh, and get ready to head the, hit the road. We just packed a few fruit snacks for the kids. And Liz is just going to get the kids to do a toilet break and everything, all that boring stuff. And then uh, we'll jump in the car and get out of here. So we'll see you on the road. All right, so we've just pulled up at the Oka Pits and it's just a short 300 metre walk. So nice and easy with the kids and let's check it out. Good warm up run for the morning. Yeah. It's been a bit windy and cold this morning. We're all rugged up. I've got my windy hat on. I might switch over. I don't know why that's a story. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's a story. Because Simon is a very, very tolerant man, especially when it comes to wind and hat hair. I hate hat. I he, hate he, wind. He does not care what he looks like, what he's wearing, what his face looks like, how, you know. You could probably tell. <laughs> but wind in his eyes <laughs> and hat hair blowing everywhere sends him bonkers. Like, just sets him off. So, hat hair tied up. All right, let's get out. Let's get these kids out. Ooh. Ready Look at this. Looking good, H. Okay, All right, Harrison, we we're going to an ochre pit, which is like drawing rocks. Drawing rocks? Yeah. Where the indigenous people got their paints from. And their, yeah. And their wow. Pencils. That's amazing. You like drawing rocks, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Drawing rocks are the best rocks I've ever seen. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Let's go find them. I wonder what colours we'll see. I wonder if there'll be any purple ones. <laughs> so this one looks like another pretty easy, easy walk. It's um, paved as well. So wheelchair and pram friendly. And like Liz said, only about 300 metres. So pretty easy. You can already see in here the different colours of the ochre in this creek bed.
Yeah. Like someone stacked these like pastels in a box yeah. in some sort of pattern. Even just in the yellows, like just here, yeah. you know, you've got so many different it goes from the creams through to the deeper yellows and browns and So these rocks, these ochre rocks, they're like a hard chalk basically. So if I were to grab one and to put it on another rock, it would chalk up and leave like a chalky dust and the pigment is quite strong. Yeah, indigenous people of Australia would use it for a variety of things. Mostly in ceremonies, they mix it with um, animal fats and water and things like that and paint it on their skin for, in different patterns for different ceremonies. And yeah, there's different men's ceremonies and women's ceremonies. They also use it for their artworks. And again, they mix it with different materials. I think it's, it's the mid-morning slump. I think uh, we better get back to the car and give these guys a snack ASAP. <laughs> but that was, that was really cool. Nice stopover, easy walk, highly recommend. This one's definitely on the list of must-see places when you come to the West Max. What did you think of the ochre pits? Good. Good? That was great. Oh, that's good. I loved it. Good job. That good was review. good. That's a good review. Yeah. Is that your main review? Mm-hmm. Anything else you'd like to say about the ochre pits? Does I the ochre pits have very good colours? Mm, yeah. This place this place is very cool. Okay. Good review. Yeah. Alright. Well that's that's it. Harrison said you gotta come. and Gorge, just having a quick bite to eat, a quick morning tea snack, number two. Yeah. The boys up in Mealy Bar. Pretty sure the boys are both having growth spurts at the moment and I did not count, like, cater for that in our grocery shopping for a month. We'll have to toe up again, I think. We're just checking out the walks here at uh, Ormiston Gorge. So there's a few different options. You've got just the water hole itself, because it's just a 300 metre easy walk. Then you got a 1.2k return to the ghost gum lookout or a two and a half k loop around the ghost gum walk. There's the pound walk which is a stonker, eight and a half k, three or four hours. Bowman's Gap, nine k's one way which is even more full on. Mount Giles, 16k and then the Lara, Lara Pinter trail. trail. So the problem at the moment is there's a bit of water around and on some of the trails you have to swim through the creek so there's a warning on this one over here for the pound walk saying swimming through cold water is required to get through it and on this ghost gum walk that I was looking at like that looked like the best one for us and just reading the description it says that the walk uh, involves rock hopping through creek beds over large boulders uneven and sandy terrain so I reckon we'll we'll give it a crack see how we go Maybe we do it, maybe we do it backwards. So you're doing the harder bit first. So I just checked out the campground as well. So the campground is, it's just, it's all unpowered. You can't book it, it's first in best dressed. There's a fair few sites there. There's probably 20 or so sites there. It's about half full at the moment. There's uh, toilets, barbecues and all, and a picnic area there. Uh, yeah, 20, sorry, $10 a night per adult and 25 bucks for a family per night. The 300 meter walk to the water hole is paved. Wheelchair and uh, pram friendly as well, like a few of the others. But obviously the lookout walk and that I'd say is not. 
Also, we're just getting like this whiff of BO. I like when I was, I you? think I've just realised. I think it's bloody me. I was walking around <laughs> like these other people going, "Fuck have you!" And then I realised yes. it has been a couple of days since I had a shower. I probably should, probably should have a and tub. We've been doing some big walks. And we've been doing some walks yesterday. You know, I think I smell a bit, to be honest. A bit of BO. So I might jump in the shower, have a shower tonight. I think I smell a bit. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's not, it's not overpowering, it's just that you just get that little whiff every now and then. Anyway, um, maybe this jumper wasn't clean. I don't know, I'll blame it on that. Uh, so, yeah, look, maybe I'll go for a swim down here at the waterhole in my jocks. With no tape. With no tape. Take my jumper with you and give it a wash. leave you again. You are all I want more. Pretty specky. This is pretty nice. We might have to go that way, I think, to cross over. Otherwise, you can't get over to do the walk. I can see now why there's, there was a brochure that we were looking at for the NT and someone had like a picnic umbrella. And we're like, who's bringing a picnic umbrella out here? Bring a picnic umbrella, set up. Yeah, it'd be a good spot. That'd be the upside to camping here is you could just wander down to this, especially in the warmer months if you wanted to go for a swim and that. Yeah, you, know, you could wander down here and spend a day, have a good paddle around. up on that ridge there, that's where we're going. Old mate up here, he's in the nude. He's, he's, <laughs> I just got more than I'm barking for. <laughs> he's just, I won't put it on camera, but there's a bloke up here. He's, <laughs> he must be in his 50s. His missus walking behind him, filming him. He's about 100 metres up here. He's he, he stripped right off into the full nude to, to do a deeper section because there's another walk back up here that you've got to cross, obviously, to, to finish off. She's into the, down into the uh, bra and undies and he's in the nud. Good on him. <laughs> No F's uh. given. <laughs> That's great. You just keep your eyes that way, darling. Oh, it does me. <laughs> right, oh, Boys. You look like a supermodel next to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> kind of hike. You know some walks you just 
it's not that interesting till you get to the end or you know, there's a little bit to see. This is just well up and down the gorge either side. One from down in the gorge and the other one from up above. I think it's going to be pretty pretty awesome. I hear my gecko. You can hear his gecko, otherwise known as an echo to the rest of us. <laughs> It's just beautiful out here and yeah to be doing something you love out exploring this amazing country it's just it's so good I can't even describe when I think back to you know when we're both working and exhausted when we get home from work just bare minimum effort required for living and just hanging for your weekends you know sitting on the couch watching YouTube eating biscuits <laughs> To just be out here now exploring and doing it, like it's just, it just makes you feel so happy and jubilant on the inside. I don't know, I feel lighthearted and I feel like, like my personality is coming back and oh, it just feels like the right thing to be doing. And yeah, it's just, I know that, you know, one day in the future we'll be looking back on days like this and just thinking about. Oh, how, how good it was and what an adventure and so glad that we did it not just said oh we'll do that one day we'll do that when the kids are a bit older a bit easier or you know because your circumstances change so much and yeah if you're not going to do it now like what's stopping you from doing it now what's really stopping you from doing it now and then work on that <laughs> absolutely love it I'm in my happy place in case, in case you can't tell. That is a highlight, that walk. If you're coming to Ormiston, Allow yourself a couple of hours to enjoy that walk. Depending on the water levels, you may get a bit wet like us or not, but oh, I gotta say, blew me away. I can see why Ormiston's popular. It'd be easy just to come and do the 300 meter walk up and back to look at the water hole, but yeah, I don't know. At least get up to the lookout up here. I'd actually recommend doing it the reverse like we did. I think it actually worked really well. You sort of do the toughest little bit first, climbing over the rocks and then the walk up to the lookout from the other direction is, is much more gradual and then you're just walking down the steep bit after the lookout. Otherwise you're doing the steep big climb first and by the time you get to those rocks the other side the kids would be knackered and you'd be struggling I think but yeah it's that's going to make our top 10 I think things to do in the West Max. Yeah. It's um yeah really nice. Anyway we're going to go jump back in the car head back to camp for a late lunch. It's just gone one o'clock and uh, I think we're just gonna hang out in camp this afternoon. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines This ain't where I belong Ain't look at me, man, what I become So we've just taken... So we've just... Oh, look at this! I get so distracted, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should give you my God. full attention, shouldn't I? <laughs> Talking to camera. It's like you're really... Look a pretty flower. <laughs> it's like you're with me all the time. <laughs> it's not called Neil's Lookout, it's apparently. It's 100% called... guarantee it is not called. Who names the Lookout? Neil's Lookout. Neil. Neil. <laughs> Neil, obviously. <laughs> yeah, obviously Neil. <laughs> <laughs> 